In this video, we're going to look at something which isn't very exciting, but is definitely very important in computational chemistry, and that is the XYZ file format for Cartesian molecular coordinates. So to start off, uh, XYZ is going to be a format, a file that is going to contain the geometry of a specific molecule that we will be interested in. So for this file name, since we're talking about computers and how it's going to be stored on a computer, if we have whatever file name of our molecule, typically something like file name.xyz, where the xyz is the file extension after the dot. In this file name, for the file name part, we'd want to make sure that there are no spaces, no special characters like slashes or ats or things that could confuse our system. Uh, no special characters, and most importantly, thing, no uh, slashes, things that could be interpreted as being in a different directory uh, within the file name there. Okay, so what is the structure of this input of this XYZ type of format? So on the first line, what we have every time is going to be the number of atoms. So first line is always the number of atoms in the molecule. So in this case up here I have hydrogen fluoride, that's just an H and an F, so that's two atoms. So I've declared that and only that in the first line. In the second line is a comment line. Second line is a comment. That means it can be anything that I want. In this particular case, a lot of my XYZ files, I might name what the molecule is, like hydrogen fluoride. I might put a note to myself about how I got the structure, but uh, the comment can be anything I want, or it can be blank. So all of those sorts of things. Anything goes there. All right, and then the third and beyond, so the third line plus, third to end. These are going to be atom lines, so lines that declare the nuclei and where they are. So in the Cartesian coordinate in the Cartesian uh, coordinate system here in the XYZ file, we're representing our nuclei as single point charges typically. So we have to say wh what the charge of those uh, nuclei is, and we indicate that by their chemical uh, symbol. So the element H has a nucleus of plus 1, F has a nucleus of plus 9, and these are located at these Cartesian XYZ coordinates. So for our atom lines, what we have is the first uh, column of the atom line. So first column within the atom lines is going to be the atomic symbol. And then our second, third, and fourth. Let me see, what's a color I haven't used? I haven't used gray. Okay, second, third, and fourth. Those columns, if I can write here, second through fourth, those are the XYZ coordinates. So typically, the, so these are the positions of the atoms. Uh, typically, they're in angstroms, but they could also be in bore. So make sure that you're not in uh, bore, which is the atomic unit as well. Uh, whenever I write an XYZ file, I'm going to be signifying angstroms, and most quantum chemistry programs will interpret them as angstroms by default, but just be careful that you don't have uh, the one or, or two programs that are going to interpret them by default in bore. Okay, so representing uh, the molecule this way, as I said, is called Cartesian coordinates off of the Cartesian grid in three dimensions. So in Cartesian coordinates, we have our molecule represented by n atoms, n being the first line here. We have three n coordinates then, because if we have two atoms, we have two times three equals six coordinates here, xyz for atom one, xyz for atom two. 
But one issue that comes up in Cartesian coordinates is that only 3n minus 6, or 3n minus 5 if you're linear, so 3n minus 6 of these coordinates are unique. And those are called internal degrees of freedom. Okay, so, or 3n minus 5 if linear. So in this case, we've got two atoms. 3n is 6, and hf is a linear molecule. Any diatomic will be linear by necessity. So 3n minus 5 is 6 minus 5 is 1. There's one internal coordinate here, and it's just the bond length between h and f. So those are the internal degrees of freedom. So... What are the uh, redundant coordinates that are in there then? Well, three of them are translations. So if we add to the same amount to the x coordinates of all of our atoms, or if we add the same amount of y, or if we add the same amount of z, that wouldn't change anything about the properties of our molecule. It would just change uh, where it is in, in space, but all of space is essentially equal uh, in terms of its translations there. So that's not changing anything that is a uh, non-trivial molecular property. And then we have three rotations. We can rotate it around the x, y, or z axis, and those, again, are not going to change the energy. So most, most properties are what we would call translationally invariant and rotationally invariant. Uh, you won't change the energy by applying those types of transformations to the molecule. And for the rotations, it's 2 if linear. Because obviously, in this case, we can't rotate around the vector between uh, h and f because they will both stay on that vector. If, if we put them all both on the z-axis, we couldn't rotate around the z-axis because they wouldn't move anywhere during rotation. Okay, so those are the basics of the XYZ file format.